and we're live. Hello, everybody. Hello, Lisa. Hey, Josh. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome <laughs> to Darko's Arts. It's Wednesday. <clears throat> it is Wednesday. A very event after a very eventful weekend. Yes. <clears throat> <laughs> which I'm quite excited to visit about <clears throat> and and some really incredible locations yes um amazing uh amazing locations history paranormal activity uh, food <laughs> oh oh yeah <clears throat> go for the ghosts stay for the pie there you go <laughs> Mm. we were actually in the eastern uh, borderlands yes we were <clears throat> very excited about that <clears throat> and uh, and they're specifically to conduct a <clears throat> uh, an investigation mm -hmm. we <clears throat> traveled to the dark ozarks traveled which is we um <clears throat> to <clears throat> one of the quote-unquote reported most haunted towns in america mm -hmm. which is right on the uh, on the borderlands boundaries it is outside of the ozarks but <clears throat> has a a number of ties to the ozarks yes and uh <clears throat> it did did offer an opportunity to uh, traverse back into my home state Yes. <clears throat> and that was uh, a Thursday night, a Friday night uh, in Alton, Illinois. Yes. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um, and actually your first foray into um, investigating completely cold and what <clears throat> you're familiar with. Uh, very much so. Uh, I loved it. It was incredible we can we can talk about some of the technical aspects of the <clears throat> of the the process but uh so so i guess <clears throat> several several things to 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 work on in terms of of topics as my uh, um <clears throat> rather hasty supper is <clears throat> hitting bottom and my coffee is almost out, and I just hopefully will have a personality for the evening. <laughs> we will see. <clears throat> but well, I tell you, I tell you what. While, while while you're gathering your person, your real personality, I will yes. will, will shout out to our sponsor, Always Buying Books in Joplin, oh Missouri. Yes, yes. Uh, Bob and Elise uh, do a wonderful job, and um, we have uh, some very exciting projects in the works coming up they have wonderful inventory everything from general um genre reading to high-end collectibles so if you're in the joplin area check them out on north main uh if uh, if you're not local you can uh, find them online on facebook uh with inventory listed there as well and call them up and order what you want um and um they uh fortunately their inventory lends itself to our research as well so we're very grateful <clears throat> yes we are and uh i i am so i am just personally and professionally grateful um i i've always said it's very dangerous for me to go into a bookstore <laughs> um <clears throat> we 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 have empirical proof on that type that that reality mm -hmm. <clears throat> and <clears throat> then uh, uh i'm just i'm super excited to get back up to joplin soon and uh get to go in uh, i think we've talked about it i'd love to shoot an episode yep um, oh yeah, Derek, Bob. Bob has said we need to do that. So I'm I'm very excited about that. It is going to be dangerous for me to go in, um, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> just uh, you know, because I'm I'm going to buy stuff. That's bottom line. Also, this uh, location is on Historical Route 66. It is a great opportunity for folks who are wanting a <clears throat> 
real road trip experience, looking for real locations, not just as admittedly as awesome as some locations are, just a, a tourism experience, but a real, real store, real, real location experience where, where the folks are very invested and this is a, a small locally owned business. So the, these, are, these are the kind of experiences I have a tendency to live for and uh, very excited to get up. And again, super grateful to our sponsor. Yes. Thank you, Bob and Elise. Yes. <clears throat> Alvin. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Alton. Alton. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> socioculturally, we've touched on this a little bit, but socioculturally, we have seen a great transition uh, that, it, that is continuing from <clears throat> the idea that with, with a few exceptions, mm -hmm. most places in the United States through the 20th century, speaking approximately, uh, the last thing in the world a location would want is for somebody to think that it was haunted. It would be bad for business, bad mm -hmm. to if your hotel, uh, bed and breakfast, store, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, even to the point we we both uh, come across reports in a situation where an individual in the in the related to the structure is going. There's so much activity here, but nobody really wants to talk about it. Right. <laughs> that does happen. Still some. <clears throat> yeah. And <clears throat> we're really beginning to see this transition to the point that paranormal tourism is a, a, a reality. Paranormal tourism is something that can be heavily marketed upon. I <clears throat> really like this because it, it has a tendency to really ensure preservation of a lot of different historical locations. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> certainly when done effectively, it, it can be done <clears throat> in a way that is, is very successful, very profitable for a location, and also non-exploitive. And yeah. that is, I, I think we're still in something of a transitional phase <clears throat> where <clears throat> now saying a place is haunted can get a lot of... Uh, uh, potentially a lot of uh, um, of traffic, a lot of people coming to investigate, coming to see what's going on, and and, and now if there is uh, if there's pushback, I think it is pushback in the sense that uh, a sense of not wanting the uh, the activity for a location that may have very uh, important or precious memories for individuals, uh, they may have loved ones who passed or attack, you know that they're uh, associated with the building, not saying they're haunting the building, but they're associated with the building and not mm -hmm. wanting uh, those memories, for example, to be exploited for financial reasons. Certainly, and, and that's, that's very fair. Um, and, and I agree with that. Um, and sometimes it is a fine line. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the locations that we work with, um, I mean, we've been fortunate, we've had people come in from all over the country too. Um, but um, you know, Alton has sort of landed on the map uh, yeah. in the last five, six, seven years um, <coughs> yes. as a very haunt, you know, one of the more haunted towns in America. Um, and I'll be candid, I hadn't I hadn't investigated up there before this weekend. No, I, I, neither had I. And <clears throat> I had not been to the town. I've <clears throat> sort of I grew up in the state. I've been comparatively close. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of times uh, the first time I heard about Alton was, was actually a number of years ago but it was someone who uh, now uh, had actually moved to Branson but grew up in Alton oh uh-huh and then they were like oh yeah it's a beautiful river town that's super haunted I'm like oh <laughs> well imagine that <clears throat> but <laughs> it uh, so all, all, all you know the sociocultural issues aside it's easy or, or perhaps because of I, I do tend to have a little bit of a skepticism guard mm -hmm. and going into a location saying okay uh and and this is not an attack on anybody or any location no it's just a question of I need to go there for myself see what happens see what we you know is experienced 
Mm -hmm. Uh, just because the brochure says that it's haunted doesn't necessarily mean that it is Um, and so that said we'll get into details shortly but uh, spoiler alert yes it is yeah I I I no uh, hesitation to say yes no and and, a lot of activity and um, um lived up to reputation yes it did and something that we didn't touch on a lot i threw together some information really quickly mm-hmm. uh, alton itself of course number one it is just from a historical perspective is incredibly fascinating and mm-hmm. the downtown and surrounding preserved historical neighborhoods are just exquisitely beautiful they really are i mean and there's a lot of those areas i mean a large a large footprint a lot larger than you would expect i mean um you would expect uh that size of historical area in a much bigger city yes yes you would and as we were noting something that really sets it apart uh from from many of our in missouri or in arkansas uh locations that were pre-civil war uh towns is that (laughs) illinois got along much better during Mm -hmm. the war than missouri and uh and arkansas and you know alton was not heavily damaged right during the war although much of downtown predates the war which i think is just incredible yeah a number number of the buildings dating to the 1820s so uh, yes which we just don't see that much over the stretch and so that that is very um it was intended to be, it initially was uh, proposed as the first uh, capital of Illinois because yes. it was such a commercial area that it was so important as a, as a fort, as a river yeah. fort. And uh, so from the outset, you had a lot going on and a lot of those places are still there where you don't have that in so many locations. <clears throat> yes and you know for for us <clears throat> many many of our uh, missouri locations obviously there are buildings that predate the war but they tend to you know um really richie mansion and kinder house um <clears throat> stand out to me but they are standalone mm-hmm. uh structures <clears throat> rather than essentially entire neighborhood yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, a couple of things that I that I think <laughs> um, speak to the potentiality of uh, of, a, of a plethora of hauntings. Okay. That that <clears throat> one I got a uh, uh, a death toll, an approximate death toll count from the smallpox epidemic that mm-hmm. broke out in the penitentiary during the Civil War when it was packed full of, uh, of Confederate soldiers. <clears throat> and so, you know, we're, we're talking about a, just over a 12 month period yeah. <clears throat> with an estimated 1,500 to 2,200 dead. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's obviously it's not the same as a battle, but in essence, it is a mass casualty event. Well, it is, and there, it's soldiers, and um, under, and I think in some cases, something like that, I mean, it doesn't have the instant trauma in, in release of, you know, emotion that a battle does, but you sit in a, in a prison for a year, and people around you dying, and, and, and whether or not you succumb, uh, that, ha- that has a cumulative effect on emotions and energy that I think at least equals a battle. I I tend to agree. There's, there is 
is that that sense of not only underlying history but underlying energy yeah there is <clears throat> predating that predating that by a lot and there it seems to be a really interesting <clears throat> um hydrologic process mm -hmm. in the area of course you've got the river uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the mississippi river which you know, I grew up near near the Illinois River. Uh, I grew up crossing the Mississippi River. Obviously, on a on a certain level, it's just a whole bunch of water. But you take that much force, there is energy involved, and spirit is also energy. And we all know that you know. We all watch the Legend of Sleepy Hollow, the Disney version. <clears throat> the headless horseman cannot cross the bridge. And we, we know that, that there is an association of sorts between the two. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> there's... Well, and, and, the, and the natives in the area, you know, referred to the river as the great father. I mean, it, it, it had a huge impact on their belief system, on, on just their, uh, for the tribes in the immediate area in the daily life. And so um, it, it, it took up a lot of space, not only energy wise and space wise, but just societally. <clears throat> yes. And, and if you are near a great river and just sit there and watch it for a while, mm -hmm. you, you can, it, it works its way into you. <clears throat> there's, there's a, a number of uh, above ground and underground streams yes and <clears throat> we are dealing with both sandstone and limestone yes uh, some <clears throat> very dramatic limestone bluffs that yeah, uh, beautiful <clears throat> does it's not difficult to suddenly start feeling very much at home in the ozarks looking at those limestone bluffs along the river so they, they look very familiar <laughs> yes they do uh, complete with caves we have a cave system yes that that is in the immediate area um at least one hot water or warm water sulfur spring that mm -hmm. features very predominantly in yes. uh, what we're going to be talking about <clears throat> and then the the understanding that this area <clears throat> was considered incredibly important we are not you know there, there's there's theories there's speculation there is research we can't definitively answer all of the importance, but we can say there was great importance placed on this location that became Alton by the Mississippian cultures that had also constructed Cahokia. Yes, yes. Um, interaction and, and we may get into that yeah. another another night. <laughs> oh, glyphs and things and uh, yes. <clears throat> and forms of thunderbirds. Um, and, and panthers and panthers water panthers and thunderbirds <clears throat> pardon me that's going to be a fun uh, fun episode actually yeah mm. <laughs> stay tuned the uh is an interesting tie and i'm i was just reviewing this this afternoon this evening uh an interesting tie when uh, <clears throat> in regards to um general lyon nathaniel lyon uh-huh <clears throat> when in, on April 29th, 1861, when uh, Lyon evacuated uh, the arsenal in St. Louis, mm -hmm. he, ev he evacuated the arsenal to Alton. Yeah. Uh, to the tune of uh, 21,000 guns. <laughs> Just a few things to float up the river. <laughs> <clears throat> just a few odds and ends to move out of this out of the hands of the state guard um the the proximity uh, of alton to st louis and the proximity to st charles is not to be overlooked no and these are these are incredible <clears throat> sort of uh hmm, <clears throat> an incredible triangle it really is and and just the the role of of 
boats, ferries, etc. And in fact, there is a, I haven't had a chance to talk to you about this yet, but mm -hmm. th there is local lore that Jean Lafitte ended up there and is buried there. In Alton. In Alton. It's <clears throat> a, you know, historians, you know, are, are, are divided, but there, there is lore that goes back a long time um, that he is buried in one of the cemeteries there. that's epic yeah <laughs> that is absolutely epic um <clears throat> i'm <clears throat> i'm in uh, yeah, me too <laughs> i <clears throat> well we have to go see the eagle fledglings anyway <laughs> exactly we heard well, we've been invited that's um, right thank you marcia yeah. and <clears throat> um 1937 speaking of so cryptids can either be creatures that defy expectation or sometimes they're they're animals out of place yeah <clears throat> 1937 uh two commercial fish fishermen from alton caught a bull shark in the mississippi yes yes and people you don't think about that but um bull sharks <laughs> bull sharks have been caught clear up to the ohio and actually up the Arkansas River. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> it's, uh, mm, I, I like this. This, the, this sounds a little like a horror story. Obviously it didn't end that way, except for the shark, poor thing. Uh, but it, uh, you know, the, the fishermen realized that something was, was troubling their, their traps. <clears throat> and then concluding uh, that it was fish, they built, uh, a wire trap and and uh, and baited it with chicken guts, mm -hmm. and, and what they pulled out was a five foot eighty four pound bull shark. Now, <clears throat> uh, and, and, and bull sharks are saltwater, they're <laughs> ocean fish. And so a lot of people say, "Oh, those things can't happen," but it's but it's it it does happen, and it ha it's happened on the east coast as well. Yes, New Jersey and so forth, which actually <laughs> some of those events actually gave were the inspiration for the movie Jaws. Yes, <clears throat> I <laughs> now <clears throat> obviously a, a five foot shark is not the same as you know a great white artificially shown in the Steven Spielberg film. However, shifting away from five foot which doesn't sound like much an 84 pounds of shark is a lot of shark and that's more than you're expecting to find in the river that's for sure and uh, in freshwater that that pardon me that far away from the gulf of mexico and <clears throat> that is that is worthy of sort of a sort of its own own genre of, of horror film and a great example of an animal vastly out of place. Can you yeah. imagine had they not caught it, but had simply had, uh, say, like newspaper reports of a shark swimming near Alton, Illinois, or someone seeing a, uh, you know, a shark fin. Right. Oh, everyone would say, oh, it was, you know, floating tree limb or this or that, you know. <clears throat> You would, you would, you would, you could come up with <clears throat> easily a dozen things that it was, of course, because it could <laughs> not be a shark. Right. And yet, indeed, it was a shark. And of course, the other, the other, <laughs> the other question is, okay, the river's big. Mm -hmm. The river is very big. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and teeming with with plenty of uh, of uh, fish that could supply animals, carnivorous uh, fish, the potentiality for a much larger shark is quite real. Oh, well, definitely, you know, <laughs> it, I mean, it's entirely possible. So. See, this is this is where this is where the as it went on, this is where the uh, the whole shark attack film franchise went awry because they really should have said it in illinois 
<laughs> you really want to scare people set up in the midwest you know <laughs> yes shark attacks in the midwest um lots of <clears throat> lots of entertainment to be had mm. but this <clears throat> sort of this this triangle of history uh, between uh st louis which of course I, all of these locations just have an extraordinary history it, also interesting to me the the history of each st louis st charles and alton all very very different they're very different histories they're different cultures they're different towns uh the feel the vibe this the experience is vastly different from each one of them obviously st louis is a, is a world city it's much more recognized mm -hmm. um, than the other two st charles which is as one of the most <clears throat> beautiful downtowns i've ever been in and and one of the best preserved um uh early you know colonial federal period downtown. yes I, and, and really good waffles. <laughs> uh, I just that that entire space is so incredible. There is to me, um, obviously, in all three locations, <clears throat> there is a it, it, they're all heavily influenced by the rivers. Mm -hmm and heavily influenced by what the rivers connected them to perhaps most dramatically being new orleans yes and particularly in alton i'd say uh you <clears throat> definitely have uh, a new orleans flavor to architecture and so forth that um you don't see you know even in saint charles right across the river you know um mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the fact that it was a river port and and really went back a long time is very evident when you when you start looking at some of those architectural points. Yes, <clears throat> I and it's it's also important to note this this figures heavily, I think in a, in a wide variety of our histories and and of course the hauntings as well, is that Alton <clears throat> certainly from my perspective <clears throat> shares something strongly and similar with uh, uh, Kansas borderland in that it was a, uh, a hub of New England abolitionists. That's, that's very true. I mean, that, that's very, very true. Um, a hub of abolitionists um, that affected, um, ultimately affected uh, events throughout the Ozarks and uh, along the Kansas border. So um a lot of what have when, when you start talking about john brown on the uh, on the ozarks western border um it really goes back to things that happen right there in alton yes <clears throat> yes it does and <clears throat> that sense of course one of the one of the locations that we went into they the the building was actually built by massachusetts abolitionists who yeah moved <clears throat> from New England to Alton <clears throat> in order to affect change, in order to free slaves or play a role. The, the, I, I think it's, it's difficult to put up, uh, <clears throat> really fully understand how much of a, of a um, really like, I think it would perhaps be fair to say that Alton, in regards to the Underground Railroad, would have been like Union Station. Well, yeah, um, <clears throat> going different directions of that. So very, very much so. Um, and then, of course, also a battle over um, having a free press, too, in the yes. 1830s. Yes, um, yes. Poor Elijah. Poor Elijah Lovejoy. <laughs> poor Reverend Lovejoy. He, uh, yeah. um, <clears throat> basically was murdered because he advocated for a free press yes <clears throat> it's uh so many different <clears throat> it would i'm like the dude who always talks about threshold and liminal spaces so it probably sounds 
cliche at this point, but there is such a, oh, <clears throat> almost bridging all sorts of things and all sorts of different directions. Sort of what I would classify as a, as a sense of a three-dimensional bridge through time and space mm-hmm. with this town. And I can't help but question <clears throat> whether that sense of, of constant passage or almost the sense of open portal, I, I hesitate to use the term portal because it's not, it, it conjures up images of, you know, well, yeah, portal. openings into the nether regions or whatever, <clears throat> um, you know, stargates. It's, it's and, like a way station along the way. Yeah, I, 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 I just the sense of <clears throat> passage of, of ideas, passage of time, uh, passage of people in in time and space, but then also out of time and space, uh, mm-hmm. capacity of uh, essentially the spirit realm to be passing through things or beyond things, and just this sort of mm, almost chaotic fullness <clears throat> mm-hmm. that, that seems to really ebb and flow within the space of Alton much more so than it does in many other locations. There's, there is a, a, a sense of standing out, almost like a, a constant process of voices and water and things existing just, just beyond the senses and then sometimes coming over. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I agree <clears throat> with that. Was, that, that was, that's how I felt too. It's, and I guess with that, I guess we should talk about the location we investigated. The Mineral Springs Hotel. Yeah. Um, um, def- <clears throat> definitely, uh, definitely recommend. I'll say yeah. that. Um, and, you know, as we, as we said earlier, you know, <clears throat> um, that area in the middle spring, mineral springs itself, it really, it's really been on the map for uh, paranormal investigators uh, big time for, oh, probably six, seven years, uh, gaining yep. popularity and, and renown. And I hadn't been there. Um, and so, but I knew people who had, and I'd heard lots of good things. And so I, you know, was definitely going in hoping that, <laughs> what I'd heard you know we carry through for us and um but it's always interesting when you go somewhere that you don't have a connection with it's a little different than investigating uh, a lot of places that we normally do that we've been a lot and we we have that background and sort of rapport um it's an interesting experience and you never know what to expect <clears throat> You really do not, and and, and really, you know, in, in each of this, each of these situations, you go in going, nothing may happen. Yeah, and and you have to be okay with that possibility, and I think it's also important to note <clears throat> that going into um, into an area and not having anything happen does not automatically mean that the location is not active because That's these things true. ebb and flow. <clears throat> it be a flat evening. And those, those things occur. Um, real quickly, for people wanting more information or to connect with the owners, uh, what is the, the website? I know I've been on it, but there's several different sites um, that talk about Mineral Springs Hotel. Right. Uh, actually, it's raining zen. Z E N is the name of the uh, store that the owners own in in the in the hotel, and so you can if you go to either their Facebook page or their website, uh, you can contact them if you want to set up a, a private investigation. And they have they have public tours as well, <laughs> ghost tours, walking yes. tours. If you if you'd rather just do that too, um, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, um, you know, we investigated for the night and we were fortunate. We had a very extensive tour, uh, yes, as a consequence. and 
shout out to Donna and Dave, um, mm -hmm. the owners. Um, they've got they've got a good property on their hands. <clears throat> they do. Um, also, a very beautiful property. You could to to a certain degree in terms of their <clears throat> um, non corporeal occupants. They <laughs> might have their hands full just a little bit. At least, at least on certain nights. <laughs> the night we were there, they they were they they were kind of the animal, I guess you could say. Yes. Um, also, I want to say I really, really enjoyed. I I, I would be more than happy to go back <clears throat> just to get to. I, I'd be more than happy to go back to Alton any time at this point. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I would be particularly happy to go back just to spend more time in the. Uh, paranormal museum that is there mm -hmm. it's a lot they, of fun they, they 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 have a lot of good uh displays <laughs> exhibits and it's fun it is fun um and it's set up in the old ballroom of the hotel <clears throat> there some interesting impressions um and i'm i we you and i've talked a little bit about this it's nice because i've kind of had time you know we've had time a little bit of time to sort of percolate through impressions uh -huh. <clears throat> impressions and energies is <clears throat> something that you know i think was was said during the extensive tour that that i i would sign off on because it's important to store, sort of <clears throat> wrap one's head around um mineral springs hotel was opened in 1914 largely in response to a a large warm water sulfur spring that was uncovered mm -hmm. in <clears throat> presumably by accident then leaving the uh, the owners of the property going what on earth do we do with the sulfur spring and a uh, and an italian immigrant who's working a bartender in town as a bartender in town said what you do is you turn it into a mineral spa and you create the spa experience you hire me to run it for you <clears throat> and we'll be rich beyond our wildest imagination um, because you're talking people into coming into having a medicinal experience by soaking in in uh, sulfur water which honestly sounds like it smells bad and i suspect it did <clears throat> and then i'm sure it did i mean if you've ever if you've ever been anywhere where uh, they had sulfur water and wasn't treated it smells bad <clears throat> i um used to be a ten, um not not disparaging, but Nevada, Missouri, you they, they you had a lot of sulfur content, and you could smell it coming into town. And uh, <clears throat> I mean that hasn't been the case for many years now because it's treated, but right. you see, you could smell that sulfur, you know, several miles before you got there, and it just hung over the air. So I'm sure <clears throat> you you had that as well. And I'm not. <clears throat> I'm not either, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be really clear, this is gonna be my disclaimer on the statement I'm about to make. I'm, I'm not uh, <clears throat> uh, in, endorsing any particular idea of this or disparaging anyone's particular idea on this, but sulfur and brimstone, I'm sitting there going, oh, hi, welcome <laughs> to hell. Well, for anyone that doesn't know, they used to use sulfur for uh, infections and so forth before there was penicillin. You just have to be careful not give too much or kill your patients. <clears throat> yeah, balance is good. And, uh, and the sulfur water, which was coming out in very large quantities and apparently just continued to come out. There didn't, didn't seem to be any short supply of mm -mm. 80 plus degree sulfur water. <clears throat> That they were also bottling it and selling it across the nation to be drunk for medicinal purposes. Mm -hmm. Also, sounds kind of gross, uh, but <clears throat> it's certainly an indicator that before the advent of <clears throat> of antibiotics, in particular, mm -hmm. that <clears throat> there was a, a, a an obsessive need or an obsessive mm -hmm. desire. Uh, for medicinal waters well there was because there wasn't much else yeah. to be treated. <clears throat> not a not a lot of uh of good options <clears throat> and um you know the ozarks are littered with uh with small towns some utterly forgotten some quite successful today 
uh, that did the very same thing, that they were okay. bottling uh, spring water and selling it medicinally. Eau de Vie is one of them. Ponzi is another. Uh, Eureka Springs is, you know, I think our most successful and famous. <clears throat> and, mm -hmm, yes. And, <clears throat> and the idea that around these, then of course, hotels and spas were developed. Mm -hmm. Hot Springs, uh, Arkansas, uh, mm -hmm. in, in the idea. And I, I love the idea. Uh, I, I realize that from a scientific standpoint, <clears throat> it's uh, either impossible to prove or in some cases very easy to debunk that, was there anything in the water? No. <clears throat> it did something that did cross my mind with, with some of these spa towns <clears throat> or medicinal water healing towns and <clears throat> um that uh eureka springs is certainly one that comes to mind we take potable clean water for granted yeah we really do these days and <clears throat> something that the ozarks region in many cases may have offered to individuals with illness <clears throat> was perhaps for the first time in their life they were drinking water that was actually clean that's true that's true with high mineral content which of <laughs> course can be healthy as well so uh, and, <clears throat> and, the, and there's the, obviously 100 years later plus over 100 years later there's no way to do uh you know a peer-reviewed study yeah but but the idea, because we always look at it like that's so silly, there's nothing in the water. The idea that <clears throat> perhaps in some cases it wasn't so silly because there was nothing in the water, like that's right. bacteria. <laughs> that's true. That was more sterile. Yeah, <clears throat> simply a cleaner water source. And, and the idea that for you know an individual, some in, which could also explain why some individuals came and appeared to have such a rapid health improvement True. others came and did not because it you know in my working theory is that if your health issues were being caused by dirty water you come and you stay for a month and you get clean water they're going to potentially go away <clears throat> if your health issues are caused by something else entirely they're not right exactly you know and so you know that that's that's so we're the premise of where the mineral springs in came from yes. um and uh, i guess i should say too i mean it wasn't the first thing on site it was a slaughterhouse before that go from slaughterhouse yes. to spa yeah a lot of a <laughs> lot of a lot of a uh, lot of pork blood running into the river there <laughs> yeah. and and and, <laughs> and this is not disparaging the location is incredible and the fact this was an, an incredibly, um, incredibly palatial resort. It really was. Um, I, I <laughs> and, and again, disclaimer, I'm not saying one way or the other, but at the same time, when we're on like the fourth level of the basement and we're looking at a giant sinking cistern uh, <clears throat> over the top of a sulfur pit, I'm going, oh, look, it's super convenient to the mouth of hell. Can't imagine why there's activity. <laughs> very true, very true. Um, so should we talk about some of the stories there or should we talk about the um, um, experiences that we had? Oh, let's talk about some of the stories. That, that, and for, for, for folks who are wondering, boy, howdy, did we have some experiences? We will get yeah, to those. Yeah. Um, yes, stay tuned. And, and, and yeah, and I, I, I do want to talk about the experiences in that I think that there are some experiences, uh, some historical occurrences in relationship to the hotel, which are <clears throat> potentially quite notable in the sense uh -huh. that <clears throat> this is, you know, in the category of wow that's unfortunate and really sets this apart there are also tragedies associated with the hotel 
uh-huh. that I think <clears throat> while they are very concerning, are, are tragedies associated with lots of hotels. That's true. That's true. And, and, and that probably, I guess we could start with Pearl, um, she, you know, a, a lady who checked into the, uh, the hotel was very unhappy. Um, and from the story of her life, I can certainly understand why it's a very, uh, sympathetic situation for her. Um, and killed herself. Um, yeah. and certainly can could lead to activity but it's also something that ha- is repeated over and over in uh, so many uh, hotels and people I, i've had people ask me in the past why are hotels so haunted or this old hotel is supposed to be so haunted and it could be different things but one thing is people do tend to check in to check out and that way they you know uh, they they do that so their family don't find them and things like that. Um, plus, they're surrounded in a, in a very beautiful environment. Um, yes. <clears throat> kind of reminds kind of, very off topic a, a bit, but it makes me think of the the scene in Soylent Green when when you know what scene do you want to see and what co- is your favorite color as you go to sleep for the last time? Um, it's uh. a similar. Mm-hmm. idea that that people <clears throat> and it's repeated in towns ag- ag- around the world so um yeah. but in some ways pearl is one of the more expected hauntings <clears throat> yes <clears throat> you know i'm i'm thinking of the you know stories associated with the crescent stories associated with the olivia stories mm-hmm. associated with uh, <clears throat> old english inn <clears throat> we have a very violent suicide from probably about the 1920s maybe 1930s mm-hmm. in the old english inn likelihood yeah. that it's still there is quite good um <clears throat> individuals checking into a hotel to commit suicide is very common mm-hmm. <clears throat> in in pearl's case um and this was comparatively recently in the 1960s. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, <clears throat> um, uh, an, not old, but certainly matronly woman who was, um, had, had endured many years of a very troubled and abusive marriage. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, disappeared from home, uh, checked in, <clears throat> and committed suicide through pills. Yes. And then unfortunately okay. suffered more degradation after that at the hands of her husband that we probably won't yeah. go into here, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, so, so the five species pro- was probably not at rest. <clears throat> Agreed. And <clears throat> of course the if you're on investigation, you do have access to the room area <clears throat> in which she passed. And the much of the it's on the second floor from street side now for people i I think it's important to sort of lay out a little bit of of uh spatial orientation mineral springs hotel opened in 1914 is built in a uh, mediterranean villa style Mm -hmm. and it is also built as is most of downtown alton until you get to the 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 riverfront itself on a hill on the the bluff space and so when i say i'm saying so i'm if i'm referencing we'll say street side or riverside Uh street side which is much at a much higher elevation one of the main main streets of downtown alton Mm -hmm. historic district on the street side it is the the mineral springs hotel is two stories right <clears throat> and so you go in at the lobby what was originally the lobby that's where the uh, uh the ballroom which is now a museum is also the the current shops etc stairs up stairs down <clears throat> and the second floor is where many of the hotel rooms were mm-hmm. <clears throat> on the river side <clears throat> i believe there's seven floors Six or seven, yeah. 
<clears throat> it's very disorienting. It, yeah, that's one thing it, it really can be because um, I normally, I don't have trouble with that. You know, I know what, where, I, what, where I'm at, what direction I'm facing, typically wherever I'm at, even underground. But for some reason, that building is a bit disoriented. <laughs> <laughs> and of course going to the back and then on the first floor and the lobby floor <clears throat> going to the back and then going around the corner and then going to the back and then you begin and this this will remember this folks this is important in terms of location where certain things happen we'll get to that <clears throat> actually of our of our, our several occurrences two of the most notable were associated with stairs true that's true different stairs different stairs yes <laughs> but there were stairs involved <clears throat> and so then you get to the back and then you start going down and mm -hmm. then you continue to go down and then you go down some more and then <laughs> you keep it's, going down <laughs> and it really <clears throat> it really certainly for me as we descend really <laughs> First of all, giving the impression of going, how many basements does this place have? <laughs> um, we are descending into the pit of hell. Thank you. Um, and then when you finally get to the bottom and it's cavernous, mm -hmm. it is very unsettling. It it, it is. It you know I you know it it is um, it is disorienting. I'd say. There's, <clears throat> of course, there's the, uh, the pool, and there's two pools, um, but there is the, uh, <clears throat> um, the, the primary pool, which mm -hmm. opened with the hotel in 1914, uh -huh. and at the time that it opened, it was the largest indoor pool in Illinois. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's rather large. It is large, and uh, was, was originally the... You know, it was, it was also a night spot and, and a community center for the town. Yeah. And very beautiful. Uh, reported to have, you know, again, continuing that Mediterranean theme, uh, mm -hmm. that this creating this sort of, this sort of jungle room uh, environment with, with potted palms and, and, uh, and lots of people bathing and diving into the water etc which also resulted in a death in the pool which is reported as well yes very a very kind of horrendous death uh, yes in the pool and it was uh, a young man um who was learning to swim and uh began diving over and over apparently Mm -hmm. And and this is not long after the hotel opened, right? I think just five or six years after, if I remember right. Uh, and <clears throat> and dove in the the shallow end, which I'm assuming in 1914, they didn't have all of those charming little cautionary uh, pictograms to say don't dive into the shallow end of the pool. I, I guess, and the and the pool is full of of people too. The pool is full of people, and the pool. And this it would be very difficult for this to fly today the sulfur water was so cloudy that you could not see the bottom of the pool right it's so bubbly and everything uh-huh and it smelled like sulfur <clears throat> it would this would be a hard sell today yeah it really would be <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> and he dove in struck his head um forcefully lost consciousness and drowned mm -hmm. in a very short period of time mm -hmm. and was presumably already drowned when someone found him um now it's important to understand there wasn't a lot of time that had apparently elapsed no no but the the blow to the head was sufficient that i I'm not even sure whether drowning was a much of a factor. Yes. And, but as, as, you know, squeamishness alert, someone found him in this crowded pool by stepping on his body. Yes. 
and then dragging him to the surface, <clears throat> calling calling medical authorities, and he was already gone. Right. <clears throat> so so that's you know with early tragedy, tragedy number one, tragedy number two being Pearl, uh, and plenty of tragedies in between, many of which uh, are not terribly uncommon for a hotel uh, of, you know, an older hotel. Um, the, the hotel was, Mineral Springs was also associated with the mafia. Yes. And, <clears throat> and more than one story of some, you know, very violent acts there. Very, <clears throat> very violent uh, hits. Mm -hmm. um, uh, essentially murders and <clears throat> and sexual violence as well mm -hmm. and <clears throat> certainly that was <clears throat> we can dig a little bit at this just because i think it's relevant that was certainly um just in terms of what you heard going into one room mm, in, inferred that potentiality yes yes uh <clears throat> I think it's it's important, you know, that and, and and this to me this is also an important thing. <clears throat> On an investigation, you do gather data. Mm -hmm. And and from that data, you can certainly infer things. Mm -hmm. Um that doesn't mean that the thing is. Uh, these are this is this that and ideally you you gather um, data from multiple strata uh, <clears throat> and then compare and mm -hmm. arrive at best at reasonably educated suppositions that are then shared mm -hmm. <clears throat> at, at risk of having you know someone virtually throw something at me one bit of data or one bit of information is n there's no way to can conclusively say oh this is fill in the blank right no that's i mean that's very true that's that's very very true uh that's not to say i think i think it's it's very important to understand that there's there's two different worlds or it's worlds apart to say yes there's verifiable activity yeah over to the verifiable activity is so and so doing such and such right no that's 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 a good way of putting it and i and i agree and it's easy to jump to conclusions and uh it takes quite a bit to to do that and and certainly for me i you know we may have had some experiences a bit like and dislike what other people have had there but for me i would want to experience it a number of times before i felt comfortable saying this equals this person <coughs> this, this individual man. yes uh, <clears throat> that uh and <clears throat> with so many years of history we're dealing with you know open in 1914 the fact that there were certainly things there before 1914 yeah uh <clears throat> that that alton has an incredible history that that suggest paranormal activity <clears throat> reasonably going back i would say you know a thousand years or more well um, and yeah for some things yeah i mean that's very very true and just Pretty just in terms of, you know like for me just thinking in terms of uh, of paranormal resonance or or supernatural or spiritual energy mm -hmm. within the space we're dealing with a really long period of time yeah. And so <clears throat> picking up things with, within the space is <clears throat> confirmable, and, but being able to identify it specifically with one, one thing or another, that's a whole different matter. Um, <clears throat> it was, I, I, there's a, a thought that I had started and then I, I trailed off because I got obsessed over the sulfur water um but <clears throat> <laughs> but in this regard that uh <clears throat> during the tour um our our host can, can often referenced uh the fact that this had really functioned sort of like a like a cruise ship mm -hmm. well yeah 
in a lot of and, ways. <laughs> And, and and I and I I like I like that just in terms of of bringing past to present the idea that it was it was a luxurious space it was where the party was happening mm -hmm. it was you know it was a happening place <clears throat> as I was sitting in the uh, the museum which was originally the ballroom looking at the the era of wood looking at the just absorbing the space cruise ship was not what came to mind but riverboat was well and well and of course cruise ship would be you know for the modern uh audience comparison, but no i i agree with you and certainly river boats were a big factor in that area um and um i think there's a lot to that um including you know there were times that river boats not only brought you know your your dry goods and your, you know, cotton and those kind of things, but contraband and um, <laughs> yes, uh, there, there were tales of runaway slaves being brought there for, and uh, someone that lived close by actually returning them south, uh, all kinds of things that, you know, really were pretty much on the footprint of that hotel. Yes. <clears throat> And the, the, to me, there's, there's a resonance of the river, mm -hmm. of the river culture, mm -hmm. and this uh, almost like, a, you know, blood and arteries connecting from, <clears throat> from places that in which I grew up to places like new orleans to mm -hmm. even places i you know have recently recently been that have great resonance for me places like paducah kentucky on the yeah. ohio <clears throat> and the the water connects it all oh definitely, definitely. it's <clears throat> I, I for me alton and and mineral springs as well as as i continue to percolate on this it really pardon me it's gonna it's it's increasingly going to be one of these locations that call me back yeah i have to admit i'm already, i'm already being called so yeah <clears throat> um mafia mafia violence mm -hmm. mafia um you know chicago mm -hmm. and 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 of course st louis yeah um, in in this regard and <clears throat> then as the as happened with many of these locations <clears throat> that and and i find this particularly interesting of course alton's fortunes began to wane after the war yeah and that's something that i i want to do some more research in to me it's very interesting because <clears throat> of course i think it's a natural ebb and flow but so many areas in the, United, in the United States really began to experience great economic boom following World War II. Mm -hmm. Others did not. Eureka Springs right. obviously suffered heavily um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> by this, and it appears that Alton did as well. Yeah, it seems to have. <clears throat> kind of over time, things slowed down. Mm -hmm. pretty, should pretty about our should we talk about our experiences yes yes um oh <clears throat> i saw a white mist that wouldn't go away until it did <laughs> <laughs> you might explain what what you mean by that because it's it, it, it was definitely interesting i did not see it but yes <clears throat> yes and the uh <clears throat> multiple staircases in the in the hotel uh we were on the back primary staircase and mm -hmm. <clears throat> there there is a a folkloric death associated with the staircase yes and and they do think it's folkloric but it has sort of stuck <clears throat> there 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 does seem to be some sort of of uh recorded apparition or haunting associated with the staircase area mm -hmm. um, we were on on the second floor to the staircase mm -hmm. and uh our host um uh, 
and, and tour guide for the evening, Dave, was on the staircase discussing. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think you were had stepped around to the 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 top of the stairs. I think so. Yeah. Uh, my my niece was just behind you, mm -hmm. uh, sort of in the in the foyer area, next to the wall and the door. And I had mm, was was slow to catch up. So <clears throat> I and I, I look across at y'all, which is I don't know, probably about fifteen feet, something like that. There thereabouts, uh, maybe a little longer, 15, 20 feet away. And I look over y'all, and <clears throat> I see a what looks like drywall dust. It is a suspended, non-moving mist that is over essentially hugging the ceiling at the mm -hmm. at the point that the ceiling and the wall come together <clears throat> there is fluorescent lighting in that space mm -hmm. and there the, certain areas are a little dim away from the fluorescent lighting and i i literally just think initially that my eyes are playing tricks on me so i blink a couple of times and look again and it looks like very fine suspended drywall dust except it's not floating it's not moving. It is extremely stationary. <clears throat> my, my niece looks over at me, looking at it over her head. She looks at me. We make eye contact. She looks up. She doesn't see anything. Um, and <clears throat> this continued for a sustained period of time. And then just before I'm getting ready to walk over there, it's no longer there. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I, I'm going to say something that sounds very weird because it's going to say sound like I'm saying the same thing. It wasn't as though it vanished. Right. And, and, and by that, I mean, we, we I think most of us grew up with Bewitched. Uh, <clears throat> so, for example, when <clears throat> Samantha gets ready to disappear, you see her and then there's like a notable absence when she is no longer there. Right. This, and here's, here's the weird thing. This is the only way I can describe it. It was there. It was not there. There was no notable absence when it was no longer there, except it was then no longer there. Yeah, it's, it's not like it, it looked like something was now missing. No, yeah. <clears throat> it did not. And, and of course, the, the argument being, well, if, if you saw it and it was there and then it was no longer there, didn't it look like it, like, <laughs> sounds very contradictory. <clears throat> I, the only way I can currently describe it at this point is the sense that <clears throat> in, in, in purely corporeal terms, mm -hmm. <clears throat> If something sudden, if something physical suddenly becomes absent from a location, it is jarring in its absence. Yeah. So, you know, props. If, for example, I have something physical in my hand and then all of a sudden it was not there, it's something physical, it would be very jarring in terms of the transition. Right. I do not get the sense that what was there was corporeal. And so yeah. at that point, its absence cannot be jarring because it would have had to have been physical for its absence to be jarring. That's the best I got. That's fair. <clears throat> but it did look like drywall dust, except there was no drywall dust. Yeah. And... I, I can vouch there was no drywall dust. Yeah. The rest I can't because I, I didn't look up because I think I was looking at Dave talking yes <clears throat> and also and i think this is a this is not uncommon with uh with paranormal experiences is that when something is happening the the human brain does and does not register <laughs> that can happen yes um you know because i got the sense that i'm going obviously i'm looking at something but I will, I will be the first to say, even though we were there to look for ghosts, right? I, my brain spent that entire time trying to figure out if it was drywall dust. Exactly. Until it was no longer there. 
um, I, I had related a little bit of an experience of, of that experience this afternoon. And somebody asked, did you get a picture of it? It's like, it never even crossed my mind. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's sort of the old story of, you know, I saw Bigfoot, but you didn't take a picture because you're just so in that moment that people don't, yeah. don't in, do in, it. Yeah, in the sense of going, what is it I'm trying to look at? I kept blinking and looking, mm -hmm. blinking, looking. And, and about the time, about the time that I figured out this was not anything normal, <laughs> that was not it was no longer there. So yeah. that, and that's, it's not the first time that I've seen something, but it was very, it was just, it, it's, it's not normal for me to see things. It's much more normal for me to, uh, to sense things, uh, -huh. uh, or, or, you know, so, so, you know, the visual aspect of things is, is very new for me. Um, it was, it was fascinating. I, I can't say that, it, that in that instance, it was not concerning, it was not malevolent, it was not scary, it was not, there was no sense of, you know, pushback, we'll get to that in a moment, um, none of those things, <clears throat> it was just observing a phenomena that my brain did not know how to translate. Yeah, well, you had a little bit of another experience, too, that similar as far as trying to process, but it just but it was different. It <clears throat> very different. This was this was uh, several hours later, mm -hmm. and I mean, this was after <clears throat> beyond the tour, and then a bit, quite a bit later at night, and we were actually mm -hmm. conducting our investigations. Also, in relationship to that, <clears throat> um, our EMF meters were crazy. Well, within the. Uh, the original footprint of the building. I mean, to be perfectly honest, that that building acted like it was a Faraday cage. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it did. It really did. It makes <laughs> makes me wonder what the superstructure. Including the parts of the building that have no power. So, <clears throat> right, we we were in sections that have no electrical conduit, working electrical conduits whatsoever. No mm -hmm. lights. No lights. No wiring. Nothing. <clears throat> and and. I enjoy this. Uh, <clears throat> important to note that if you do go on an investigation, <clears throat> you will sign waivers. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> areas of this building, now some areas of the building are off limits, even to the even with the waiver. And of course, we respected that. Encourage you guys to do so as well. But a good chunk of the of the uh, space that you do have access to, you sign waivers beforehand and you're on your own yeah you know this is this is not a this is not a spook house and it's not a mall you know the, the no. exits are not necessarily going to be clearly organized because you're not in areas that are normally accessed by the public that's right and i like that i will be the first to tell you i i think that is cool i always... I, I, <clears throat> I love getting into spaces i'm gonna show my charming renegade side i love getting into spaces that have don't have not like color coded the safety structure which <laughs> kind of used to i totally get the importance however <clears throat> it, it's good to get off the beaten path <clears throat> and uh and <laughs> And and away from, away from a world that just has nothing but childproof safety caps on it. Very true. Speaking of no childproof safety caps, why don't you share what else happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're you're talking about my my uh, the chair. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so there's there, there's a number of chairs around for mm -hmm. folks to sit in and we were on the second floor in the space that uh, it is believed that pearl died mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> i think it's very important to state lots and lots of other things have happened layer after layer within the space so yeah, there's no we're, way we're, we're just putting mentioning a few things that happened yes and <clears throat> um my my niece found the chair very unsettling mm -hmm. Uh, so me being me went and sat in it <laughs> and <clears throat> and then sitting there for a moment and 
then in all candidness, I told you to go sit in it. So what's that? In all candidness, I told you to go sit in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. But I didn't mind. Uh, but I'm sitting there and then I just really get the strong impression that I probably shouldn't be sitting in there. Mm-hmm. And I stand up and I experience. So I'm going to say what it is I experienced, and then I'm going to start explaining why that's odd. Um, I experienced a, a chill that started at my calves and worked its way up and then continued to exacerbate mm-hmm. in very odd ways. And <clears throat> it, uh, it wasn't associated with the temperature. No. Uh, <clears throat> it was, as, as I described it to you, you know, just that, that sense of like someone, uh, someone like very, you know, tracing along and then and if anybody's watching you can do that and feel the kind of creepy feeling that that initiates <clears throat> except mm-hmm. it was not external it began mm-hmm. essentially inside my legs mm-hmm. evenly inside my calves inside the bone it felt like from the inside out but very evenly just above the ankles spreading out spreading out spreading out spreading out through my calves working its way up until it gets to my back and then just starts working up my back and <clears throat> then i'm like okay that's uncomfortable mm-hmm. weird i'm gonna gonna move over here now <clears throat> and then we we uh um did some other things well i will say during that same time period i had a similar I did have the similar sensation um, go through my arm. Did you? Interesting. Yeah, but it uh, very uh, almost electric, um, <clears throat> like nerve stimulation. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and to be honest, from what you're just what you described is what I've experienced before when you when something's interacted and, and touched and often will go through you yeah it's so so that was your first experience (laughs) yes it was um it was unsettling it it, yeah it wasn't it wasn't (laughs) i i think part of the unsettling quality was just the the brain reacting to something that it had no reason to no physical reason to react to going and i i would say you know just in general i found it fascinating but my brain's going basically going through all of the check boxes i really spent a lot of the time um i'm not trying to say like being skeptical for negative reasons because obviously this is something that i believe in healthy skepticism but as I would begin to experience something, my brain then going through all the checklist boxes of identify all the things that it actually is so that you're not jumping at shadows. Right. And, <clears throat> and, and now having what, what, once it happens a few times to you, you, you your brain starts going, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, you've experienced it before, so. Yeah. Now, in in the the second time, because that that happened twice. Yeah. That was <clears throat> the first time was with my legs moving mm-hmm. its way up, and then I moved moved out of the space. Um. <clears throat> and <clears throat> then we transited to several different locations on the upper floor, mm-hmm. and finally ending up down by the the near the stairs where I saw the white mist. Right. And then we walked into the, we were in the, the spaces that have, have had some really interesting uh, child EVPs. Mm-hmm. And it was also believed that one of those rooms or possibly more may have had a, um, um, you know, a mob hit. Right. Uh, also in now in the room really didn't get anything. <clears throat> But stepping into that closet area, which doesn't have any drywall in it, it's bare studs. Yeah. That closet area impacted both of us. 
Yeah, it felt it, it it well, it had elevated EMF and it and when I stepped into it, it felt uh like it did. Um uh, and that's just because I've done this long enough that I know how EMF affects me. Um and it felt very it, it felt very, very heavy and specifically in that closet area. Yeah. All, all, there didn't appear to be any wiring <clears throat> in the walls around it or anything. No, and and on three sides there were no walls. That's very fair. It was just the footprint of what was a closet. <clears throat> yeah, uh, <clears throat> I I would hazard to say I would be very interested in further research if something happened specifically yeah. in regards to the closet. Um, something bad. Um, I, I would be interested in that. Yeah, because that <clears throat> that was that was a very heavy resonance in that and then we walked into the space across the hall mm -hmm. which does have more walls uh, or mm -hmm. you know uh and that's where that whatever that sensation how how what would you call it a, a chill doesn't really doesn't seem accurate to me oh, it's something going through it's being touched by <clears throat> something mm -hmm. it, you know, uh, I mean, I always describe, you know, I, you know, you can say you were touched by a ghost or in some sort of entity or something, but it, it's usually uh, feeling a, like a nerve electricity, often either with a hot singe to it or extremely cold, like almost dry ice. Um, yeah. And I just equate it with something going through me. Mm hmm. <clears throat> and that, and there, that there, there, was also, there was also the room that i i i heard what sounded like maniacal laughing so yes <clears throat> yes and that it that that room is reported mm -hmm. uh to have been a a location of violence yes um and and very unsettling levels of violence Yes, and it, it 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 sounded like almost a, a sort of a taunting laugh. Yes, and that <clears throat> the 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 second energy point that I experienced really started at the base of my back was more intense, worked mm -hmm. up into my shoulders and through my neck. And, yeah, and that was where I'm just going. Okay, I don't think I really should be in this this particular room right now. And you know, and you, you just have to respect that when you get that mm -hmm. feeling that you know you, your your mind's <laughs> telling you something for a reason. So. Yes. Now I'm going to set if our, we we've got one other big experience to share. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, setting the space for this. <laughs> yeah. You set is, the space for it. Yes. Is. Um, we transited down during the tour portion, we transited down to the lowest basement and then mm -hmm. we're transiting out up the stairs. This, uh -huh. is, this is the area that <clears throat> certainly had been associated with uh, the slaughterhouse footprint. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, <clears throat> it was an area in the seventies into comparatively recent times was um, uh, a place where homeless would take refuge and that various violent acts were said to occur there. Yes, it's also the location of the cistern. Yes, yes, that that is true. It's just around the corner. And uh, <clears throat> I will say, I mean, the cistern is approximately filled in with debris. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, sinking. What's that? And slowly sinking. And slowly sinking. Yes, <clears throat> uh, you do have to realize we're we're also not very far above. Uh, the water level of the river yeah not point. very not very far from the river um i mean it's pretty much if you were to go out the back door there's the highway there's the railroad tracks there's a little stretch of land there's the river yeah is yeah, really it's not wide either no uh this basement area of course is is very dark it's very cavernous um the mm -hmm the the supports the the poured cement supports from 1914 <clears throat> that's holding most of the building up that's where they are uh, mm -hmm. i uh, 
again, sounding a little cliche, I found the the energy space in regards to the cistern to be very unsettling. Yeah, I, it, 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 it definitely had a heaviness to it. Uh, <clears throat> when we were we were instructed, don't walk on the debris. Uh, it's dangerous. The thing that went through my head was there's no way in hell you could get me onto that debris pile. I'm not getting any closer to that thing than I need to. Yep. <clears throat> and then also in, in reference, and this is this is a little bit of the the history that I would say definitely sets Mineral Springs Hotel apart as a, as a, a very interesting cultural threshold liminal space with the potentiality of of hauntings is within that tiered level near the basement uh-huh. <clears throat> was the second swimming pool yeah and the 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 reports associated with the second swimming pool my, my general assumption it was built as an auxiliary for the uh for the main swimming pool mm-hmm. but as as the the fortunes of the hotel declined and portions of it began to be blocked off it became its own separate business mm-hmm. uh, in the 1970s and that was as a gay bathhouse yes in in an era when that would have been very very illegal within that space oh, illegal no was it yes yes and so <clears throat> very odd energy within that general space as well Uh and saying that to set the stage we were transiting up the staircase we'd been down in these areas we were transiting walking up the stairs essentially in immediate proximity to all of that right you were walking in front of me Uh i was right behind you Yes, and your niece was in front of me, and our yeah. our guide was in front of her. Yes, and you, you kind of coming up, and you kind of do a, a slight little jog to get to the next steps. Yes, and I look up, and the only thing I can describe—I mean, I've seen mists before, that kind of thing, you know, a number of times over the years—but this was like seeing a mist in the shape of a fist and forearm coming towards my face and before and, and as you said trying to register it it, it we're saying it didn't really register and my head went back although at the time i didn't necessarily feel like like i was physically hit you know like the weight of a physical punch but my head went back <laughs> and went to my knees and um i I just remember thinking what the hell was that (laughs) yes yes Yes. and Um, and i was right behind you i saw you go down you were right behind me when you did yeah 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 and i felt you start to catch me um and more than anything, I, I, I was just like, what was that and, and why? Um, not sure, you know, why, you know, it would have picked me. Um, and, um, but then as the evening wore on, my neck was getting stiffer and I felt, and I, and the bridge of my nose was sore as if I had been hit. Yes. You know, yes. which it, it's hard to try to describe because, you know, again, it wasn't as if I felt, actually felt the fist, but I reacted as if I'd been hit by the fist. Yes. And then later, you know, muscles, et cetera, reacted as if I'd been hit. Yes. Yes. No. So, it's, what that it was, was, I don't know. You know, <clears throat> and he, even our even our guide was like he wasn't sure. <laughs> right. <clears throat> it's <clears throat> there's you know over over a hundred years of layers, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and <clears throat> you know, and 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 a lot of those layers having some sort of association with 
um, mm, violence in in mm-hmm. to some degree. Yeah. This it's very <clears throat> again, you know. I mean, it's 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 a level of it's a level of contact that is is that it took it up a notch yeah i mean i've had contact before and everything but not not quite like that and see and like i said just seeing it and it looked like a white mist but very much in the in the in the form of a of a fist and forearm yes yes so quickly and close to me you know the mind you know i just it was like, what's that? Boom. And my head went back. Yes. <clears throat> and, and with enough force, like you said, you, you went down. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I, you know, for, for skeptics, I do think this is interesting because <clears throat> you now in terms of seeing or feeling anything mm-hmm. for all the rest of us, completely not there. I, I didn't right. see anything. Um, I can tell you because of the you know where we were on the stairs and where my eyes were uh you didn't trip you no. were you were you were walking just there there that wasn't the case yeah. um but all of a sudden you're going down i <clears throat> i may have minimized some of my own personal response i don't know i know we've discussed this a little bit i mm, definitely developed a protective energy response <laughs> yeah y- y- i could tell that so um in in regards to you in regards to my niece that uh you know i i i don't like i don't like the people that i'm close to and i care about getting punched um yeah <clears throat> so you know it there was it was just it it was fascinating um and like you said we we there's you really can't identify the person so to speak or the former person that's true that's a question that's left open and you know i have a feeling we will be going back and maybe we'll find out (laughs) yeah yeah it's so much just layers of stuff i there's there's a word and mm, the as as i'm as i'm just analyzing the experience again and like i spoke about last week allowing my rationality to degrade a little bit as it moves into Uh memory the impression that i have is one of a lot of people i think a lot of people a lot of energies and that kind of get sifted and sorted through that that sense of you know like sort of the murmuring of a crowd i think that's i think that's well put and we might we might want to kind of leave it there Mm -hmm. that could that works for me uh, we will be back next week um not sure what we're talking about next week yet but we'll we'll figure it out and of course we are always open to input ideas or uh, things that you all would like us to research yes and we hope you all have a good week and see you back here next wednesday sounds good thank you lisa thank you alex thank you all thank you all thanks josh thanks alex